Welcome to a journey of transformation. Are you ready to unlock the secrets to a life of fulfillment and respect? In today's video, we're diving deep into the art of self-empowerment. We'll explore 10 life-changing strategies that will not only elevate your presence in the eyes of others, but also amplify your inner strength. Whether you're seeking to enhance your relationships, boost your self-confidence, or simply find your path to personal greatness, you're in the right place. So buckle up, get ready to be inspired, and let's embark on this exciting adventure together. Hit that subscribe button. And let's begin. The art of not revealing everything. Imagine yourself as a captivating novel, each page a revelation, each chapter a new adventure. The secret. Don't turn all the pages at once. In the dance of relationships, the allure lies in the unsaid, the unexplored. Like a moonlit path shrouded in mist, your story should unfold in tantalizing whispers, not thunderous declarations. Seneca, the wise Stoic, once said, to be everywhere is to be nowhere. Apply this to your life's narrative. Be present, yet enigmatic. Share your tales, but leave some chapters veiled, inviting others to lean in, to wonder, to wander through the labyrinth of your experiences with a growing intrigue. Think of Cleopatra, not just a queen, but an enigma. Her allure wasn't merely in her crown, but in the mystery she wrapped around herself, like silk. Your life, too, is a tapestry. Reveal it thread by thread, letting others weave their curiosity into its gaps. This approach transforms your persona into a riddle, a puzzle they yearn to solve. In essence, your life isn't an open book, but a series of unfolding chapters each revealing a bit more of you, the complex, compelling individual you are. By preserving this air of mystery, you become an irresistible presence, leaving others longing for just a little more. Crafting a fear of losing you. Picture yourself as a rare comet, streaking across the night sky a spectacle, so mesmerizing that its absence leaves a void in the hearts of those who've witnessed its brilliance. This is the essence of creating a fear of losing you. It's about embodying a sense of irreplaceable uniqueness, a spark that once gone cannot be reignited by another. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic sage, once advised, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Embrace this wisdom. Cultivate an aura of independence. A life so vibrant and fulfilling that your presence becomes a coveted treasure, not a given right. Your existence should be like a riveting novel, each chapter filled with your adventures, passions, and dreams a narrative so enthralling that the thought of missing a single page fills others with a sense of loss. This isn't about playing hard to get. It's about being hard to forget. In relationships, let your absence be felt like a missing melody in a symphony. Be the irreplaceable character in their story, one whose departure would leave an irrevocable gap. By doing so, you transform from a fleeting interest into a cherished priority, a presence so profound that its mere thought evokes a fear of loss, compelling others to hold on, value, prioritize. You're not just another star in the galaxy. You're a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic event. In mastery of creating your own happiness. Envision yourself as an artist, your life a canvas, and happiness your most exquisite creation. This is the art of creating your own happiness, a vibrant masterpiece painted from within. It's about finding joy in the solitary notes of your own melody, a symphony that resonates even in the absence of an audience. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, once said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Embrace this. Let your happiness be a self-crafted journey, not a quest reliant on others, like a sun that shines regardless of those who bask in its warmth. Your joy should emanate from a deep internal wellspring. The self-generated happiness is magnetic. It's an aura that glows, attracting others not because you need them to complete your picture, but because your picture is already complete and they wish to be part of its beauty. Your confidence and contentment become a beacon, drawing people towards the light of your presence. Theodore Roosevelt, despite life's trials, 
embody this principle. He found exhilaration in his own pursuits, from boxing to exploring the Badlands. His happiness was not a borrowed ray of sunshine. It was his own fiercely burning and undimmed. In creating your own happiness, you become not just a participant in life, but a creator of it. Your joy becomes an invitation, an alluring dance that others can't help but join. Remember, your happiness is a masterpiece only you can paint, and in its creation, you become an irresistible force. The power of not centering your life around others. Visualize yourself as a planet, not just revolving around a single star, but shining in your own orbit, illuminated by your own light. This is the essence of not making someone else the center of your universe. It's about recognizing that while relationships are celestial, your life is its own solar system, complete with its own pursuits, dreams, and passion. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, once said, he who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. This harmony is found not in orbiting around someone else, but in rotating around the axis of your own life. Your individuality, your goals, and your happiness should not be eclipsed by another's presence. Consider the example of Sir Isaac Newton. His contributions to science were monumental, yet he maintained a rich personal life, filled with hobbies and friendships. His identity wasn't solely tied to his scientific achievements or the people in his life. He was a constellation of his own interests and pursuits. By not making someone the center of your world, you create a dynamic where your relationship is in addition to your life, not the sole focus. It adds depth, intrigue, and a sense of independence that is inherently attractive. You become a partner who complements, not one who completes. In this universe of self-sufficiency and mutual respect, you shine brighter, drawing others into your orbit, not out of necessity, but out of the sheer allure of your radiant presence. Prioritizing your needs. Embark on a journey where the compass of your life points towards your own needs and well-being. This is prioritizing yourself, a journey not of selfishness, but of self-respect. It's about steering your ship through the waters of life with the understanding that your happiness, your dreams, and your peace are the treasures you seek first. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, once said, it is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. Apply this wisdom to your life's journey. Your course is not determined by the winds of others' desires or the tides of their approval. You are the captain, and your judgments, your needs, are what chart your path. Imagine Roman General Lucius Quintius Cincinnatus, who, despite his power, chose the simplicity of his farm over the allure of political life when not needed. His story is a testament to the strength found in prioritizing one's own values and integrity. In prioritizing your needs, you become a lighthouse for others, a symbol of strength and self-determination. You teach them that in the ocean of life, everyone must navigate their own course. Your presence becomes a beacon of balance and self-care, guiding not just your journey, but also inspiring others to find their own way. In this voyage, you are not abandoning others. Rather, you are ensuring that when you sail alongside them, you are the best version of yourself, strong, fulfilled, and capable of weathering any storm. Don't be always available. In the tapestry of life, imagine yourself as a rare, elusive thread weaving in and out with grace and intention. This is the art of not always being available, a subtle dance of presence and absence that creates an aura of intrigue and desirability. It's about valuing your time as a precious commodity, not to be squandered, but to be shared selectively, enhancing its worth. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, once said, we are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. This insight applies to the perception of your availability. By not being perpetually accessible, you ignite the imagination, leaving others to ponder over your engagements, your pursuits, your story. Consider Ada Lovelace, a pioneer in computing, who, in an era of defined roles, chose to immerse herself in her passions and intellect. Her selective presence added to her mystique, 
making her not just a figure of her time, but a legend for the ages. By choosing when to be present, you become like a coveted masterpiece in a gallery. Not always on display, but when revealed, you capture the full attention and admiration of the onlookers. Your time, your presence, becomes a gift, not a given. In this dance of availability, you are not playing hard to get. You are simply hard to forget. You become a story that everyone wants to read, but only a few are given the next chapter. The Priceless Art of Being Values Let them invest in you. Imagine yourself as a rare, exquisite gem. One that doesn't just lie in the open for anyone to claim, but rather is discovered after a dedicated search. This is the essence of being costly and encouraging others to invest in you. It's about understanding your inherent worth and allowing others to realize it through their efforts and commitment. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, wisely stated, a gym cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. Apply this to your life. You are not a commodity to be picked up at a whim. You are a treasure to be valued, sought after, and cherished. Your presence in someone's life should be a result of their deliberate choice, an investment of their time, emotions, and energy. Think of the relationship between Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Wozniak's unique talents and contributions were pivotal to Apple's success. Jobs, recognizing this, didn't take him for granted, but instead invested in nurturing and valuing his partnership. This mutual investment made their bond stronger and their achievements monumental. By being costly, you're not playing hard to get. You're being hard to forget. You're allowing your worth to be discovered, appreciated, and revered. It's about showing that you are an enriching addition to someone's life, worthy of their earnest pursuit. In this dance of mutual respect and appreciation, you become not just a fleeting presence, but a lasting imprint in their hearts and minds. Mastering the art of not initiating every conversation, imagine your interactions as a symphony, where the music is not just in the notes played, but also in the pauses between them. This is the essence of not always initiating the conversation. It's about understanding the power of silence, the eloquence in the unspoken, and the allure of the space you leave for others to fill. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher, once remarked, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In the realm of conversation, this translates to not mirroring behaviors that lead to imbalance, such as always being the one to reach out. It's about maintaining your dignity and allowing the natural ebb and flow of communication. By not always starting the conversation, you create a dynamic of mutual effort and respect. It's not about playing games. It's about fostering a balanced exchange where both parties contribute equally. This approach adds value to your words and presence, making them more sought after and appreciated. In this dance of dialogue, you become like a rare book that others are eager to open. Not because it's always available, but because it promises chapters filled with depth and meaning. Your silence is not absence. It's an invitation, a space you create for others to step into, to engage, to connect. In this symphony of communication, every pause, every moment you hold back, adds to the anticipation and depth of the conversation, making your eventual words a melody that resonates with significance and allure. The Art of Balanced Emotional Attachment Picture yourself as a sailboat on the vast ocean of relationships, your emotions the sails that guide you. The art of not being too emotionally attached is akin to knowing when to unfurl your sails and when to reel them in, ensuring a journey that's both exhilarating and serene. It's about embracing the winds of connection while maintaining a steady keel of self-awareness and composure. Seneca, the Stoic sage, wisely counseled, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. This pearl of wisdom is crucial in managing emotional attachment. It's about giving yourself the space to reflect, to respond rather than react. Your emotions are valuable, but they need not steer the ship of your relationships at all times. In this balanced approach, you become like a lighthouse, stable and grounded, even as the tides of emotions ebb and flow. Your presence in relationships is marked by a calm depth, a reassuring constancy that doesn't waver with every gust of emotional. This stability is magnetic, drawing others to your tranquil shores.
By mastering the art of balanced emotional attachment, you offer a relationship that's a haven, not a storm. It's a bond where emotions enrich, not overwhelm. Your measured attachment speaks of a maturity and understanding that makes your presence not just desirable but deeply comforting. In this dance of emotions, you are not distant, but you are discerning, creating a harmony where every emotion has its place and every connection its perfect balance. Embracing the power to walk away, envision yourself in a dance where each step is a choice and the most powerful move you can make is sometimes to gracefully exit the floor. This is the essence of being willing to walk away. It's not a retreat. It's a declaration of self-respect, a testament to knowing your worth and refusing to settle for less than you deserve. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This strength is evident when you have the courage to walk away from situations or relationships that do not honor your value. It's about recognizing that your presence is a privilege, not a right to be taken for granted. In this dance of life, your willingness to step back is not a sign of weakness, but a bold statement of your standards. It's an understanding that your emotional well-being is paramount, and anything that consistently undermines it is not worthy of your time or energy. By being ready to walk away, you command respect and admiration. You become like a rare and precious work of art, one that cannot be owned by those who do not appreciate its value. This choice is not about pride. It's about dignity. It's a powerful reminder to yourself and others that while connections are precious, your self-respect is priceless. In the grand ballroom of life, your willingness to walk away turns you into an enigma, a presence that is cherished and respected. It's a dance where your steps are measured not by proximity, but by principle, and where your exit can be as impactful as your entrance. As we wrap up, remember your journey to self-empowerment is unique and ever-evolving. Embrace these strategies, apply them in your life, and watch the transformation unfold. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more empowering content. Until next time, stay inspired.